Hello and welcome to another edition of News Today. My name is Kemini Nyamani. I'm on a coming up. National Executive Committee of the Ghana Medical Association expresses concern about the ongoing, trans ongoing controversy over the sale of Merchant Bank by SNIT to Fortis Equity Fund. Also ahead, Coinbase, a startup that lets people trade bitcoins, has raised $25 million. Democratic Republic of Congo government signs a peace deal with the M23 rebel movement, its forces defeated last month. Stay with me, I'll bring you details of these stories and plenty more over the next hour. Don't go away. And again, this is news today. The trial of suspects arrested in connection with the seizure of a foreign registered vessel at Ia Georgetown as last month for carrying some items suspected to be cocaine has been adjourned to January 7. The seizure of the vessel, said to be from Guyana, was conducted by the Western Naval Command. Five persons, all foreigners, were found on board. A helicopter was on hand to transport the sacks containing the items to Accra for further investigations. Eric Curtis Howard, my colleague, was in court for us. He's joined us over the telephone. Hello, Curtis. Hello, Kamini. Mm. We know the case has been adjourned to January 7. What more can you tell us? Okay, um, as you yeah, know, the last time the court said and uh, that um, the five um, suspects all pleaded guilty to the charges that were um, or charges of possessing cocaine. So, um, so then when they went to court, um, the case was adjourned because the trial judge wanted a report from the uh, NACOB officials. Mm. Um, to come out as to whether the uh, the substance in the possession was indeed cocaine. That's the first one. They also um, they also gave the opportunity for the um, the three of the five suspects to also um, explain. You know, they said they were guilty with explanation. That was um, that's the plea that they pleaded the court that they were guilty with explanation. So the judge wanted them to explain what they meant by that. So one of them gave the explanation that he was on the ship and he heard that um, um, what the, the captain said. And they should move the substance. They should move the substance into another boat so that it could be sent. But he couldn't tell. He was not there. He did not see the people coming to know which substance it was and everything. So that was what one of the substances. And the judge, the trial judge, was that the explanation did not really set well in the year. So actually, they were wanted the case to. They adjourned the case to the 23rd of December. But um, the lawyers for the um, the accused person said. During that period, so during the unified season, so one or two activities happened. So they, they adjourned the case to on the seventh, and mm -hmm. the the trial judge was saying that on the seventh, he was ho he is hoping that's the way the term he used, he's hoping to give the ruling, mm -hmm. maybe that because the accused person could change their plea, or maybe the re the reports from um, the Ghana standards board, the NACO, mm -hmm. to prove that the substance may not be cocaine or anything else. So he's just hoping that so should everything go well. Since they've already pleaded guilty, who just give us the sentence to the fine what, what do we know about why uh, the, the test results have not uh, appeared yet? Okay, that was not really and clearly contained in the court. Uh, mm. the, it was not really said as to why it had not contained. All that was said was that they are still waiting for the report, and as long as, as soon as the report comes in, and they're hoping that by the 7th of January, the mm. report will be ready, and the Officials will be in court. That's from the Ghana Standards Board and back up. They'll be in court to explain to um, the, the charger as to whether indeed the substance was tested, was cooking, and we'll take it from there. Then, just after that, and every, if everything goes well, they'll just give them, they'll hand out their sentence. Mm. And they'll first be the guilty. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Eric. Eric Curtis Howard joined us uh, from the courts in Accra. 
move on to some other stories. And a lot more parents are seeking confirmation on the paternity or otherwise of the awards from the DNA Center at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital from an annual rate of about 150. The center is now handling almost 800 cases. And that is the figure as of December 2013, with patronage likely to spike following recently published high-profile cases. Now, though, this means good business for the center. There is growing concern also that the outcome of these tests is leaving a trail of destruction with children having to bear the brunt. Eric Atisawad, again, in following the report, explores the subject of paternity testing with my caution. Uh, be careful what you wish for. It used to be the case until a few years ago that most parents, especially fathers, after their spouse's liver, only need to see some semblance in the looks of the baby to convince themselves that they are indeed their true parents. The availability of the DNA technology at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital has however changed all that as far as Ghanaian parents are concerned as they now have it within their reach, an option which was otherwise quite expensive. Dr. Theophilus Adiku, acting head of the immunology department which operates the DNA laboratory, explains you no longer have to wait for your world to grow up before you use their physical appearance such as height, looks or skin color to determine whether they are yours biologically. No. Currently, we use what we call um, the, the areas that we test. There are, we call them the locus, locus of the gene. So this genetic lo lo locus plural is loci. loci. <laughs> we test 16 loci, 16, and all the 16 must come out positive. If one is negative, we reject the result. Dr. Diku says there have been quite a number of male and female clients working in to verify the paternity or maternity of their wards. Most of their cases, however, are referrals from the courts. A sizable number of the requests that come to them, he adds, is also from the embassies for persons seeking to migrate to join their relatives abroad. If you are coming with a child without the mother's uh, 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 consent, uh, consent or secretly, normally this center doesn't have the such policy. We don't want to, because that could also be abuse of the child. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a lot of children, there's a lot about our children. So this center have a policy, we have a protocol that is not also allow that. Mm -hmm. So you need to, if the mother cannot, there must be legal counsel or rep to represent that child that indeed you come in order that you can smuggle the child and then come and say, Dr. Deku, I want to check this in there. The findings of these tests have consequences. Fathers cease to bear responsibility for children. We've always called them daddy, with consequences for the mothers of such children. Or in some instances, mothers suing hospitals over claims their babies may have been swabbed at birth. Dr. Tiopilos Adiku believes the consequences for the children especially can be damning. There are cases where um, a child may know a man as a friend. The parents, I mean, people, their relatives introduce this a friend, but somebody, I mean, it, it, it happens that he might be the father. So he grows up knowing this man as a friend of the family, not knowing that uh, he is actually his father. So if the child gets to know this, you can now see the emotional uh, trauma and stress that the child will undergo. So such cases, um, we may have to cancel them separately. And then after the test, if it puts prof uh, uh, positive, we just release the cases, the results to the courts, and then they will then determine the... So, Will you cough up the 950 Ghana cities needed to verify the paternity of a child you've always believed to be yours, if you have reason to suspect otherwise? <laughs> Or secondary school, maybe a school. Ah, we have been a university now that they know where we are now. Ma, me, I was working. Tambena, I was saying, I'm a good deal. I'm a son, young Kalei, 
said the woman here on soon here on soon in Queen. Tipping Conquay Crana and the problem be Abba. I dare order no more, I order. Who crowd you may crowd to me, I should. And tell me when you're crossing a cockway crowd. Because I dare order and I order. Tell me to bread is thicker than water. These others, however, will want to, even though not all of them are eager to throw out the children, they find not to be theirs. First born for about ninety five percent of your mom for there. Your second born, I was a rare child. No, but you just send me I thank God. Send you a big and I'm here. So, what do I have? I feel not a normal canon. So, we'll be there. Try your war. Now, if this report is making you to take another look at a child, it makes you want to visit the DNA center, you may want to think twice. As they say, what you don't know won't kill you. Reporting for Joy News, Eric is Howard. A 13-year-old girl who was recently rescued from serving as a fetish slave may just end up in that situation again, sadly. Uh, because the media spotlights do led to her rescue has brought teachers at the school some trouble. Her enraged parents are said to be threatening the teachers with juju and curses. Parents, after Joy News aired the story, took it out on the teachers, accusing them of inviting journalists to blow up their daughter's case. It's since become a daily ritual for the parents and other relatives to hail abuses and curses at the school to the extent that the chief of the area has had to intervene. The end of the school term this week, the teachers say, will come at a great relief to them. They are, however, not so sure about Angela, as with none of them available to seek her interest, she may be sent back to the shrine. At the heart of the parents' frustration is the fact that they've been denied the wealth that would have come with Angela's initiation into Chokoshi. Meanwhile, Chokoshi tradition also states that another virgin will have to be sacrificed to the shrine should anyone have carnal knowledge of Angela having been already dedicated. A flouting of this custom, it is believed, will result in mysterious deaths in the community. Angela at this point badly needs support from wherever. Comlado's report. The National Executive Committee of the Ghana Medical Association has expressed concern and uneasiness about the ongoing controversy over the sale of Merchant Bank by Social Security and the National Insurance Trust to Fortis Equity Fund. Fortis, in October this year, acquired 90% of Merchant Bank, which hitherto had a SNIT as its majority shareholder. I spoke to Dr. Kwabnel Pukwe president of the GMA, earlier. Here's a playback. Uh, what you are saying is that everything that appears to be shrouded in secrecy. What we hear is what is on the air and in the newspapers. Somebody says we have taken over, somebody said we have acquired, somebody said it's a sale and all that. Mm. What we are saying as workers, as health workers, and on behalf of other health workers, is that we continue to SNIT, and SNIT is in Richard Bank. And now they are saying they are selling to whoever. What is the guarantee that our future is guaranteed under this transaction? Somebody needs to tell us uh, that we will not uh, be short changed. Somebody needs to tell us that every contributor will be safe and that my contribution will not be postponed and that I will receive the right amount that I need to receive when I go on pension. I've seen people receive 1,400 Ghana cities after working for over 40 years. I've seen doctors who are on monthly uh, sustenance of 150 Ghana cities as doctors. I've seen doctors who receive only about a thousand CD. We need to know. Somebody must tell us the truth. That's why we've written to almost everybody. That, yes, uh, the sale, we are not experts into this international takeovers and measures and all that. But we need guarantees that you will not be so changed as workers. The number one protector of the land mm. is the president. So we've written to the office of the president. Mm. We've written to the director general of Senate, the chairman of the board of trustees, the written to the Minister for Health, mm. uh, Speaker of Parliament, Majority Leader, Minority Leader, General Secretary of TUC, and Organized Labor, and everybody, including mm. you, the press. So we listen to Smith. Mm. I said the Director General of Smith, right. and the Chairman of the Board of Trustees. We listen mm. to all of them. We have written. Mm. We hope that we get satisfied answers. We don't get satisfied answers. We take the next step. What we are trying to say is that 
where they're going to have people continue to have confidence in Smith. Mm. For now, by law, by compulsion, my my money is left from source. What the guarantee that an individual person who are even supposed to contribute to Smith will be encouraged to do so. Mm. Just like the uh, the car uh, car insurance. Mm. So many people do car insurance because it's a compulsion mm. by the police. Mm. If you do a sample, you see people who will not on their own do car insurance because of what has gone on in the past. The Savilugu School for the Deaf in the Northern Region, one of the special schools in the country dedicated to children with hearing disabilities, appealing to government and non-governmental organizations in the country to assist the school fans it's to enhance the security of the occupants uh, in the school. Established in 1978 with a student population of 283 does not have a fence. This exposes the students with hearing and speech impairment to intruders who use the school compound at their will. Headmistress of the school, Getu Dasa, made the appeal when Zoom Lion and Just Pong group of companies presented quantities of rice, cooking oil and cash donation to the school as part of their annual Thanksgiving and prayer sessions. She said because the school had no fence wall, some children sometimes disappear to unknown locations posing problems to school authorities. Once we are a special group and we don't have voices, people don't know we exist. But actually we are needed. As you can look around our campus, you see that we don't have a wall defend us, protect us from anything. Mad people walking here and we battle with them. We battle with animals, we battle with human beings, mad human beings, and all kinds of criminals. Recently, a female student disappeared from campus, resulting in a manhunt for her. Zoom Lion announced that the company will soon set up a recycling factory in the northern region to collect plastic waste. This, he said, would create employment opportunities for the youth. So Zoom Lion in his wisdom try to creatively come with an innovation to solve the problem or to reduce the, the problem that you know, we are facing. And that is why the plastic recycling project was uh, uh, instituted. And the purpose of this project is to create value for the plastic. Similar presentation was made for inmates of the Gambaga alleged witches camp. Meanwhile, people living with disability are calling on government and other relevant stakeholders to see to the implementation of the Uniform Building Policy Plan for schools and other public places, according to Chief Executive of Enlightening and Empowering People with Disability in Africa, Sefa Kokomabupo Meyie. A Uniform Building Policy Plan will help address the poor accessibility challenge faced by uh, the disabled persons in the country. Now, Excellence Awards. The maiden edition of the National Disability Awards was in honor of Dr. Henry C. Dudana, Ghana's Minister for Chieftaincy and Traditional Affairs, who is the first visually impaired person to be called to the bar in the country. The ceremony was to celebrate persons with disability and other stakeholders who have excelled in their various fields of endeavor and encourage others to give of their best to unfortunate ones. Chief Executive of Enlightening and Empowering People with Disability in Africa, Sefako Komabu Pomiyi, was awarded for her role in fighting for accessibility in schools and public places to be made disability friendly. She was worried that despite constitutional and legislative guarantees for the rights of persons with disabilities, Ghana's disability laws are failing its people because of lack of implementation 
We can be proud as Ghanaians to say that we are the best in policies. We have really recognized that we have really seen the need to even set up or write policies around this issue. Uh, the second issue uh, as to how government is really involved, that is a problem we have in Ghana. Implementation. All the laws are there, but we haven't gotten the implementation stage. We haven't gotten there. Because if the laws are implemented, then that means that everything can happen, I mean, with a smooth running. Everything can happen, looking at the policies in place and the implementation level. The National Information Officer at the United Nations Information Center, Cynthia Pra, lauded the initiative and called on other corporate bodies to support. The what every country needs now are tools for action and change in order to realize an inclusive society where everyone's rights are protected and equal opportunities are supported. We also call on sectors of development in Ghana to come on board to ensure equality, social justice and rights for persons with disabilities. The foundation is seeking collaboration with the corporate world to implement projects and programs that would transform persons with disability. So far, Ghana has experienced 478 incidences of fire disasters nationwide in 2013 alone, affecting 11,766 persons. National Disaster Management Organization said on Thursday, the cost of damage of the fire, which include some markets in the cities was estimated at over 15 million Ghana cities. According to the report of the National Technical Committee on Fires and Lighting, there were also 15 fatalities during the period and attributed the cost of the fire outbreaks to non-observance of basic fire safety regulations. You're watching news today. There's more ahead. Don't go away. Welcome back to news today. Now, managing director of the Precious Minerals Marketing Company Limited, Ruben Dumte, has called for greater investment in gold, noting the industry is so lucrative despite a sharp drop in prices. The commodity, from a high of nearly $1,700 at the beginning of 2013, is now selling at about $1,200. Decline in price has, however, not made the price of jewelry any cheaper on the Ghanaian market, except goldsmiths say there's been a significant drop in the number of patrons. The owners of some jewelry shops in Accra we visited are not eager to speak on camera, but say an 18 carat wedding band for the groom on the average sells for about 400 Ghana cities, with a 14 carat ring going for some 300 Ghana cities. For us, it's not significant to change. Uh, pricing in terms of uh, jewelry, but it's it's good because um, the small scalers then can sell their gold because most of them are holding some stocks which they bought during the low. So I think um, it should help us in terms of uh, export um, 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 demands. The Precious Minerals Marketing Company Limited is railing from the impact of the slam as it has affected its revenues. We all anticipated gold price would um, stay at the levels within the first quarter. Then it all sud suddenly dropped into the 1200s, which was a vast revenue loss to us. That's why I'm saying if it had happened in June, at least we could have recouped some of uh, our losses and then be able, uh, more be able to match our um, our budget, you know, our estimated revenue budget, both for us and, of course, for the country. You know, the country needs the gold proceeds for its um, development. You know, and as you as you are aware, this drop causes a national revenue drop. He, however, explains why there is still very good prospects in the precious metal. The drop also has a, an advantage. You can. <laughs> Buy more, buy your gold now, as an investment, and sell it when um, it, it 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 begins to yield. You know, uh, 
And for those of you out there, we are doing scrap gold. So you can bring in your all jewelry, your coins, your cases, and this we buy and pay for um, instantly. So despite the drop, I mean, people are wearing rings and other things, so they are rich. So we, we, we do, this is a new line we've introduced, at least in terms of people knowing that um, scrap gold is also, you know, valuable um, on the market. He adds that they remain hopeful demand for jewelry over the holidays may drive prices up before the year ends. You're still watching news today. Let's let's get a quick overview of uh, happenings on the stock market as we end the week, and then also we'll continue with uh, individual stock analysis. We started with fund milk, and then sometime last two weeks we dealt with uh, the fundamentals of Carl Bank. Today we'll do technicalities, but out of goodness of uh, David Odoidankwa and myself. We'll do a recap of the fundamentals of Carl Bank. David Odoidankwa is uh, with the Gold Coast Fund Management. Uh, he's with us in the studio. Thank you very much, David. It's been Most a welcome. long while. Yeah, last, last week was a holiday. Yeah, was a holiday. How was it yeah. for you? I was good. Mm. So let, let's, let's start with an overview of the market. Okay, um, starting with an overview of the mm. market. As we said, um, we shouldn't be expecting much from the Ghana Stock Exchange as we are getting close to the end of the year because as we know, some indicators in the economy and the normal third quarter um, or Xmas um, pressure on the financial market is affecting the market so much that we should not expect the market moving I mean, so high or returning so much to investors. But one thing we can assure investors is this is the right time to buy because prices are relatively dropping and mm. as prices are dropping that this is the time for you to buy so let's just look at some um the uh, some of the indicators on the mm. stock market we have the um ci which is the um Composite, composite index, index. yeah opening the week with 77.01 percent year to date and closing the week at 77.19 percent we can see there is an increase but this um increase is just marginal and it's not consistent that's why we say the market is still down because somebody looking at this might mm. just think that the market is yielding yes the market is yielding but it's not consistent so when you put your money in it you can't just be assured that next week by this time you have the market also increasing and as we are saying the index is an average measure of the performance on the stock exchange. So some few stocks, due to their weight, when they are moving, they put the market along. But the market in general, I would say, is not that doing well. And looking at the financial stocks, that is the index that um, also measures the financial stock. Mm -hmm. um, uh, begin the week with 70.52 um, year to date and close the web um, today and um, yesterday at 70.57 so you can see that one too yielded something and maybe a quick look at the dollar adjusted the gold coast dollar adjusted um index started the week at 45.74 and closed yesterday at 45.56 and you can see that one is dipping a little and when we even look at the gold coast all share index we can see that one too dip a little because it started the week at 61.84 um percent and closed yesterday at 61.53 let me touch a little bit on the dollar um mm, adjusted go, go index mm. because that measures the performance of those who are, I mean, um, investing on the Ghana stock exchange, but still wants to keep their money right. in um, dollars. Because some people, we have foreign investors coming into the country, investing on the Ghana stock exchange, but they still want to measure their returns in dollars because the depreciation of the CD will knock out some of their returns. So that is what we have the Gold Coast All Share Index dollar adjusted, and that closed at 45.56. So people measuring their investment in terms of dollar is having a returns of about 45.56 which is um, pretty good is I mean um, okay for the average investor so the market we will say is still not picking up is going down gradually and as we are saying it's I mean gradually go down or mm. still be volatile so maybe we close the year but is, is so the, is it a good time to invest this is the good time to invest actually this is the good time to invest looking at the first half of the year coming to maybe the third quarter of the year then that was the time to um, um recoup from mm. the financial market and we saw that at that time a lot of people were doing a lot of redemptions on the market because the stocks as at that time had yielded a lot of returns but notwithstanding some stock are still yielding mm. so when you get the right mix on the market maybe before even the stock as it um in, in um 
as a whole picks up somewhere next year we are anticipating by the close of the first quarter the stock market should pick up if only the indicators will be right back mm. then but even if you buy the right mix or the right mix of stocks on the Ghana stock exchange you might start getting your returns before even the market picks up finally somewhere next year first quarter right uh, and then last week uh, last two weeks we started with the fundamentals on of yes, Carl Bank. we yes. made clear that Carl Bank is actually a good stock to yeah Carl Bank is actually one of the mm. good stocks on the market but as we are going through the um, mm. fundamentals you see at the point Carl Bank has started dropping and somebody mm. might ask why is the stock dropping we will explain when we get it but as we said we should just go into the a bit of the fundamental we studied um the, the stock um car from 2012 and we saw that a year on year and even on quarterly basis the stock was just added to its net profit and profit after tax so the stock has been doing well and it's not just this year and even looking at this year the stock is doing extremely well on the ghana stock mm. um it's doing well when it comes into its fundamental as in the profit that is making as a company and when it comes onto the stock market to that is the technical analysis what we are going to look at today mm. let's, could, let's you, look at that quickly yeah you can see that the stock to be, is doing extremely well because the stock opened the year at 0 0.37 mm. um ghana cities and the first quarter closed at 0 0.54 ghana cities the second quarter at 0 0.82 ghana cities this is because <laughs> we don't have much time on our side so let me just run our viewers through and the third quarter was around 1.09 ghana cities but the stock hit its highest in um on the second of august um, 2013 that is i'm talking about this year at 1.17 and the lowest was recorded in um somewhere january 7 at 0 0.37 but somebody will just check okay the stock now is what dropping because the stock as of today is around um 0 0.98 Ghana mm. pesos um and you can see it means after september though the stock was able to just give very good returns um or very good fundamentals the stock is dropping so somebody will say why is the stock dropping and as we've said some fundamentals in the economy or some of the economic indicators mm. in the country is not really right or it's not appealing mm. to investors so some investors are really certain by mm. and especially some of the foreign investors they are also taking their money because they don't know what is going to happen to our currency to some of the economic indicators so they just want to play it safe by trying to mm. just take what they have right. on the market and so that is we'll, affecting the market a little we'll, we'll leave it here on 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 cow, on cow uh, yeah. next week are we going to do cow again no or next would, week um, would, we just want to look at some other stocks some so other that, stocks um in our viewers will also benefit because we know others are having stocks in I'm other sure. companies sure. and they want us to I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Th thank you very much uh david david odoe dankwa is with the gold coast fund management and so you had him if you have any stock you'd want us to analyze just send it to uh as uh, via email or on a social media platform join us on TV uh, let's get into some other business stories and coinbase a startup that lets people trade bitcoins has raised 25 million dollars in venture capital funding the largest by a Bitcoin startup Bitcoin a virtual currency has been attracting a lot of interest and its value surpassed one thousand dollars recently backers of the currency which is not controlled by regulators have been pushing for its increased usage coinbase said it will use the funding to educate the market and promotes the mainstream adoption of Bitcoin. The firm said in a block spot, uh, confidence in Bitcoins has grown after a U.S. Senate committee described it as legitimate financial service at a meeting in October. However, on Friday, the European Banking Authority warned that the potential risks of using Bitcoins. That's it for business. Uh, there's more ahead. Sports is brought to you by Tigo. We'll do that when I come back. You're all come back. It's time for some sports news now. And Black Stars coach Chris Yapia has been honored by Guinness Ghana Limited for being the first uh, black coach uh, to take uh, the Black Stars to uh, the World Cup. Basketball, you know, basketball and the rest. Some of us have held ourselves for the nation all these years. No one has ever recognized what we've done. And for Guinness to show this, I believe that, you know, I don't know if everybody is going to what Guinness have done today. Thank you. 
is that position. I know of initially many Kenyans who doubted that I could hold this position, which I personally know is not going to be easy. Uh, taking into consideration the players involved, the, their egos. And I keep saying, managing blasters is not about what you do on the pitch, it's about how you manage them off the pitch. Go on the pitch, any coach, coach can do it. And the FA has always, always been behind me. They've never interfered. You know, they've supported me. The ministry has also been so supportive. And I wouldn't be who I am today if not a help of my technical team. You know, Maswell, Dr. Sabampe, Dr. Baba. No, I can't even mention them. You know, they've all been so supportive. And Check out some Ghana Premier League match fixtures for this weekend. So there, there it is. We have Liberty to go against Hats of Lions. Ash Cold versus Brickham Chelsea. There's Faisal, which will lock on with Bechem United. Amidal's professionals will go against Azakas. Mediama SC will go against Inter Allies. There's Dwarfs versus Kotoko. Ediana Stars will then also go against Edubiase FC. While All Stars will lock horns with Hats of Folk. Crystal Palace, Everton will face Fulham. Newcastle United will go against Southampton. West Ham West United will take Sunderland. Hull City will go against Stoke City. Ashton Villa will take on Manchester United. Norwich City will take Swansea City. Tottenham Hotspur will also take on Liverpool. Now to Bundesliga fix fixtures, and there's Hertha Berlin will take on Werder Bremen. Bayern München will take on Hamburg SV. FC Osberg will take on TSV Eintz. And Hanover 9-6 will take on Nuremberg. Mainz will take on... Borussia München and TSG Hoffenheim will take on Borussia Dortmund. VFL Wolfsburg will take on VFB, VFB Stuttgart. And Schalke will take on SC Freiburg. Bayer Leverkusen will take on Eintracht Frankfurt. Then on to Syria, where Catania will take on Hellas Verona, Chievo Verona will take on Sampdoria, Fiorentina will take on Bologna, Genoa will take on Atalanta, Lazio will go with Livorna, Livorno, and Parma will take on Cagliari, Udinese will take on Torino, Juventus will take on Sassuolo, Napoli will take on Internazionale, AC Milan will take on AS Roma. And that's it for sports. Thank you very much for staying on news today. President John Mahama returned home Thursday from his trip to France, which ended in South Africa following the death of Nelson Mandela. The president joined African and other world leaders in the Elysee Summit on Peace and Security in Africa and Paris, France. Here are highlights of the activities in France, Paris at the summit, which President Mahama 
went to. Now, President Mahama reiterated his position that the continent cannot take advantage of the conditions it has created for growth and prosperity in an environment of maritime piracy, terrorism, rebel activities, drug, and human trafficking. President Mahama observed that African countries, including Ghana, have not paid attention to matters of security because they have, over the last many years, been investing in human development, especially to achieve the MDGs. This, he said, had left the African continent vulnerable to persons he described as small groups of disciplined and well-armed bandits. Almost 40 African leaders attended the two-day summit, which focused on peace, security, economic partnership, and climate change. The meeting took place after the UN Security Council adopted a resolution authorizing French and African troops in the CAR to use force to protect civilians. South Africans have been warned not to attempt to go see Nelson Mandela's body in the capital Pretoria unless they are already in the queue. The anti apartheid leader's body is lying in state of the Union buildings where he was sworn in as South Africa's first black president in 1994. More than 50,000 people were waiting for buses uh, when the warning came. Mandela died December 5 at age 95. Joining you, Sir Solomon Jojo Kwabena is joining us from Pretoria, South Africa, over the telephone. Hello, Jojo. Hello, Kemini. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Mm. Why, why are people now being warned not to go join queues if they're already not in the queue to see the body? Well, um, I, I just returned from um, L.C. de Villiers, um, which is a sports ground um, close to Pretoria Hatfield. And that is where, if you want to go to the Union buildings, you have to go and the back or just come and then um, chauffeur um, you to the Union building because um, it's quite a distance um, that is from, from Hatfield to the Union building. And you know, many people want to see, um, you know, far past the uh, mortal remains of Nelson Mandela. And, and it looks like the queue there is, is massive. I, mm. I even tried to say, Today, I had enough time to, and I really wanted to um, make sure I also far past the body because it's historic. But I mean, I, I gave up because, because of the queue. The queue was just too long. Mm. And so um, the people are just, uh, what the security personnel are just stopping the people because they can't take it anymore. Um, so far, about uh, 35 people have far past the body, and uh, they extended the, uh, the, uh, the, the deadline that is from all the way from mid afternoon to. Um, all the way to uh, 5.30 p.m. today. Mm. And they are saying that they don't want to go beyond 5.30 p.m. today. Mm. And, and what time is it in South Africa at the moment? Um, it is two hours uh, ahead, uh, ahead of Ghana. So uh, let, two. Me, let, me, let me just quickly check. Two ahead mm. ahead it, of Ghana. It, it so should be it about should 2 p.m. Uh, uh, yes, 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 2 p.m. It should be about 2 p.m. And hence, there's no time to to allow more there people no to come see the body. The, but if you, if you, the queue is so long, mm, I tell you. Mm. It is we, so long. We in the studio out, too are quickly it. running out of time. I, I understand there is an update on uh, the sign language interpreter who's apologized for his behavior, but uh, there's a quick update on him. Do, uh, quickly brief us on us. I'm telling you, the, the, the latest on him, which was just uh, announced um, just about 30 minutes ago, mm. is that... Um, he has a very long criminal record um, background. Mm. Um, he has been accused for rape, uh, theft, um, so many charges, and he has even served a three-year sentence already. Mm. Mm. And so um, it, it has opened a bigger debate as to the security, as to the background and what the security was doing. I mean, before, because they have to run a background on uh, especially many people who who, who, was, who was playing a major part in the ceremony. And people are just saying, well, with this man who is the phenic and uh, is on, uh, has mm. been educated and they spoke to us, um, they, they, they dug into his medical records, showing to and people, I mean, it's a really dangerous situation, but it looks like the government has not come out to say anything yet. Now they are just relaxing and waiting for um, the funeral to end, then uh, final funeral rights, then, then they address that issue. But I mean, it's an issue that is raging, it's, it's one very topical issue here.
Mm. Jojo, we'll leave it here for now. Thank you very much. Jojo Kobna uh, joined us from Pretoria, South Africa. We've been given, getting an update on the filing past the body of Nelson Mandela, which uh, is to end in the next two hours. And he tells us that uh, due to the increased numbers or increasing numbers, uh, South Africans have been advised to stay at their homes and not attempt to go to see the body. And also, a background check into the interpreter who's made news uh, since the Memorial Tuesday uh, is, 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 has shown that really he has a criminal background and has raised more questions deepening the debate over who contracted him. Let's do some showbiz now. And Ghanaian act star actress Nadia Buari has ventured into a new er area with her new movie, Diary of Imogen Brown. The movie does not only see her in the lead role, but also sees her taking on the role of director and producer for the first time. Thanks for staying on. You're watching news today in our main news. National Executive Committee of the Ghana Medical Association expresses concern and uneasiness about the ongoing controversy over the sale of Merchant Bank by Social Security and National Insurance Trust to Fortis Equity Fund. Coinbase, a startup that lets people trade bitcoins, has raised $25 million in venture capital funding, the largest by a Bitcoin startup. Many thanks for staying through this morning news on myjoyonline.com. Have a lovely weekend. My name is Kemini Nyamani Amana. See you next week.